Hi, and welcome back to my channel. One of the things my wise father-in-law loves to say is, plan your work and work your plan. He also likes to say wood is good, but that's because he's a carpenter, so get your mind out of- I've recently taken a new approach to planning, and it's been working for me to my delight and to my client's delight. And I really want to share it with you in hopes that you will get something out of it to make yourself a secret weapon for your clients. You ready? Okay, so this plan, I use both Google Calendar and a bullet journal. Bullet journaling is something that I started doing at the beginning of 2017. 2017 was the year that was gonna change everything. And you know what, it kinda did. 2017 it was a uh, bullet journaling is one habit that I have shockingly stuck with still I'm still doing it so here is my bullet journal from last year I like skulls can you tell I filled it it kind of also became my scrapbook for the year and it was just so rewarding to leaf through this and to see exactly everything that I did and so I was in love with that so then I started my bullet journal for 2018 and here's where I'm at this is as much as I've filled in so this is working for me guys and I hope it works for you too all right let's just get into it welcome to my work calendar look at all of that empty white space just waiting to be filled with to do's what you see in green are my personal tasks, my personal events. So you can see my personal calendar here, and then any tasks from my work calendar will be coded in blue. First event, let's start with waking up, shall we? You are going to learn that, yes, I do love getting up extra early and having a nice hearty breakfast right after. If you must know, it's usually hash browns with Cholula and tofu scramble with green onions and spinach. Yeah, I like a nice hearty breakfast first thing. So there we go. Rise and shine. And right after that, I like to go right into my editing session. I call it my morning edits. And I like to give myself a solid two hours for editing. There's just something about getting up first thing before the world is awake and the house is awake and just getting in the zone. Auto zone. I just really wanted to say auto zone. Share with me down below if there is something that you like to do first thing in the morning before the world awakes and you can get in your peace. All right. So next after the editing session is yoga. I like to do half an hour usually, so that will include the shower. And then I'll give myself a little buffer time there of half an hour, so I will schedule the first task of work at 9 a.m. So what I like to do is to start a test title with the client name, so I know who exactly it's for and then what the task is. So let's say um, a cell sheet, and that'll take me an hour. What I like to do is to plan my more creatively demanding projects in the morning because I've learned that's where I do my best work. My brain is freshest, and yeah, that's the time to do it. Anything after lunch, my brain is a little less awake and so I like to save the afternoon stuff for revisions or just really simple, quick projects. All right, so let's say after the cell sheet, you know what's really creatively demanding is a package design. So I will put the client name there and package design. And let's give myself Let's, those are pretty. Let's give myself two and a half hours there, and then 
do lunch a little earlier. I usually like to take lunch at noon, but because I've got the dentist to run to, I'll take lunch early and then that'll give myself time to commute. So I've got the dentist. I don't think the dentist will take that long, but I gave myself a little extra time just in case. And so I will schedule my next task at 2.30 just to give myself a little bit of a buffer. Oh, let's see. Uh, okay, so next, let's say banner ad revisions. And let's say I've been working on that, so revision shouldn't take too long, half an hour. Let's do another task. Client. Social media post. That should be quick, so let's do another half hour. I like saving email for end of day just because if I'm responding to email first thing in the morning and suddenly that shapes my day and I'm not getting the things that I need to get done, you know, suddenly my day is someone else's and I'm reacting instead of taking control and leading. I do understand that some last minute projects can arise and that's where I like to stay ahead just so I can plan enough of a cushion for last minute demands to happen. But for the most part, I really like to avoid reacting and just throwing away a day just to pivot and hop on something when we can avoid it. And I'm speaking from experience because I used to do that. I used to just say yes, 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 even though it's poor timing on maybe my client's part or just, you know, something happened and I would try to bend over backwards to make it happen, but I spent many days just wrecked and it just wasn't smart. It just doesn't do anybody any favors, client included, to just be responding. And also, now that I have a wider variety of clients, it's disrespectful for the clients I've already planned for for that day if I say yes to another client who says they need it right now. And so this is this is where planning just really is so essential. And also communicating. You have to communicate your needs. If you say yes to everybody who asks, then you have no control and you need to have control over your day and you need to figure out what absolutely needs to get done. And this will lead to my next part. So hold on. All right, so um, we're at three o'clock right now, cool. So what can we plan for ourselves? So around this time, I'm still working and but my mind is waning a little bit. So hopefully at this point during the day, I'm simply working on revisions and updates based on client feedback. All right, so let's say the next thing is uh, cab collars. You guys know those collars that go around a keg, so let's say those revisions will take, you know, half an hour. And then let's say somebody needs to call, so uh, client call feedback review. So let's say that'll take half an hour. Let's end it there. I usually I like to end my days by five, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it'll spill into six, 6.30. Here is Monday. Will I totally stick to this? No, it's pretty rare that I stick completely to the letter, down to the minute, what I have scheduled because sometimes it just doesn't happen. It's not realistic sometimes, but you know, I can then tell right away what I can do, what my day looks like, and what is possible. So if someone does ask me, hey, can I get this done by tomorrow? This is where the Google Calendar comes in handy because let's say that somebody does call me at nine o'clock and says, hey, oh my gosh, we need two days for legal to review the details for this contest that we're designing POS tools for. And the deadline is actually like two days before what I told you. So suddenly, suddenly this morning is gone, right? So I make a quick assessment. Can I put off the sell sheet? Is it due the next day or the day after? Let's say the sell sheet is actually due Thursday. Okay, cool, so I can I can move that. I can move that to tomorrow. Let's say I'll do it first thing tomorrow. So, boop, 
So that opens up my day. Okay, how about the package design though? Okay, maybe I won't get it all done, but let's at least start it, right? So I will then give myself half an hour for that package design. And then I could suddenly fill it with POS tools. And, you know, give myself two hours. Two hours should be plenty, right? Uh, cool. So, so there's that. That can happen. So, you know, anything that needs to move, you can move, and then suddenly you could see, oh wait, can't really get that done yet. I need an extra, need an extra half hour, so suddenly you have to move that over, or you decide to move it down. But seeing the calendar, seeing those actual blocks of time is so powerful. Because now suddenly your Tuesday morning is filling up, right? So anything that comes in Monday, you could say, well, okay, cool. I have Tuesday late morning to afternoon open and then so on and so forth. I know time blocking isn't for everyone. I'm just showing you what has been working for me, which is really, it's really fantastic. Okay, so the next part of my planning we're doing the bullet journal, baby. Here we are on a new month spread on my Loistrum 1917 bullet journal. I will link this bullet journal down below. As you can see, I have orange this year and I have all kinds of fun stickers. You can go crazy with it. This is what I like to do. We are going to write out the month and then, you know, add a little pizzazz. Now, I know that life happens and we can't get too crazy. I know that, so this is as fancy as I'm gonna get. I can link to other YouTubers who go real nuts on their bullet journals, but uh, as much as I would love to, I don't make time for that in my life, and that's okay. I could admire from afar. A bullet journal really is meant to be very functional and not make you feel bad for not going nuts. Okay, let's go over the materials that I like to use. I like to use the Faber-Castell pen in small, Faber-Castell in 1.5, Faber-Castell a pit artist pen just for some pizzazz. I committed to a color this year, a uh, teal, and I really love using this Prismacolor in 08 tip for generally writing in my bullet journal, like for entries and, and all that, uh, for bulleting, the actual bulleting part of it. So there you go. So now what to do, we are going to write out the days. Just go ahead and number. 31 days in August. There's something really great about, oh, 29 comes after 28. Look at me trying to do two things at once. Oh my gosh, how do I survive? August 1st, what day was August 1st? And then you go down and initial the days of the week next to the corresponding dates. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Straight off the bat, you're gonna have a couple of days that you know something's going on. I know right away that there is a wedding. I'm going to on the 18th and the 12th on Sunday, engagement party. And I know on Saturday is a little going away party for my niece. It's her first year of college, oh my gosh. And my nephew, it's his second year of college. I mean, I can't, can't believe how fast these kids grow. All right, going away party. <laughs> In case, in case you want to know, I made those with this little stencil that I like to keep in the back pocket where you can keep, you know, little loose items. This is it. This is your month. I'm leaving this blank just in case I need to write any notes or if I want to do a little doodle. So I like leaving that blank next to the month listing. So my first week of August was actually in with July. So now we're going to go into, here's my current week and I'm going to go ahead and fill out 
this week or next week. So let's see, kind of neat because then you could see the previous week through and it makes it a little easier, but I still like to count the dots to help keep things consistent. So I think it's 14 dots, one, two, three, four, five. There's just something relaxing about writing your whole week, just seeing it. So I love the digital world, but I really still love the tangible aspect of having everything right on paper. And what helps me learn is to write it out in general. That's how I learn, that's how I memorize things, that's how I keep things organized in my mind. So writing everything out helps me to focus on what's important for that week, that day. All right. And, uh, okay, so next is the individual grids for the days. So I have six dots in between, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then eight dots down. One, two, three, cool. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just love these dots, man. Where have you been my whole life, Loister? like using the bold tip of a Prismacolor. I use that to actually write out the days. So yeah, really quick, really rough, get it out there. And I like using this color to actually have the days. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I do these and I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. What? Cool. So then I can make a little date up here. And I like to add a little pizzazz. I mean, again, this may seem over the top for you, but I've seen some crazier bullet journaling stuff out there. Crazy as an awesome that I admire very much. But this is the extent to which I will go to get nuts. Okay, so then I start writing out the events. So, oh, 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 yeah, speaking of events, I also like writing events up at the top. You were probably wondering why this was separated. And then tasks at the bottom. And I, I saw this format from another YouTuber. I will link her channel down below. She's amazing, super, super creative. And she can give you all kinds of ideas on how to go, how to go nuts in your bullet journal. So we're gonna fill in the days here. We're gonna fill in some tasks and some events. So I mentioned that wedding that was happening. That is an event, so that goes up top wedding and anything else right off the bat I know is happening oh yeah and uh, the dentist that is an event because that's not part of my tasks for work this is where the bullet journal comes in in relation to the Google Calendar what I use the bullet journal for is to focus on what I absolutely need to get done on that day so you've probably heard that piece of advice for planning and organizing that get the stuff done that absolutely needs to get done for that day. Like what do you have to do in your day for it to feel like a productive, accomplished day? Write those things down. It may be one thing. It may be two things, tops, maybe three if we're getting crazy. <laughs> but write them down in the bullet journal. This is what I do. I write them down in the bullet journal and it helps me focus. And that way, anything else that I get done outside of those things, I'm ahead of the game, baby. So let's look at our day again. 
Oh yeah, I switched things around. So I got the POS tools, and then I have the client banner ads, and the social media posts, and the cut callers, and, and I have a call. Okay, so we, we definitely have to do the call because that's gonna be scheduled, right? I'm gonna have, so that I write down the time of that call, which is uh, 4 p.m. So I'm gonna star that, star that. Got a call, 4 p.m. Now this isn't gonna be necessarily in any particular order. So the call has to happen, unless the client cancels it, right? So let's see, I definitely need to get those POS tools done. Gotta get the POS tools, non-negotiable. You know what? That's it. Everything else? Because the POS tools, that takes up two and a half hours. And that, I still need revisions. You know, that, that's those are two and a half hours that I need to actually get the first round done. Then I'm gonna send them over. They're gonna get revisions. I'm gonna spend more time on it. And it may cut into the afternoon after the dentist. And the rest of the stuff that I had scheduled, that might go to the next day. But that's okay, because I have prioritized the POS tools they need to get done, no questions. And when I, when I get them done, Something that feels so great about filling in that box. You know, like doing the check mark on your to-do list or when you scratch off the item on your to-do list, there's just something so gratifying about that, right? Right? Yeah, so that's how I plan my days, my weeks, my months. Yeah. If you'd like me to go more in depth into my bullet journal, I'm happy to do that. That's how I do. That's how I plan. I hope this was helpful to you somehow. If you use a bullet journal, let me know. Give a comment. If you have a particular planning method that works for you, please share with me in this community in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I'm always looking for new ways to just like increase my productivity, you know? And this method is something that I just started enacting this year. And I think that there are ways for me to improve and I'd love to hear your tips. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye and happy planning.